Uh, I, I, you know, from a neutral's point of view, I imagine it was a great game. Uh, it was a great game. Fitting of, of a World Cup final uh, with a crowd like this in a stadium, uh, like this, and, you know, 46 players giving everything they've got. Uh, yeah, I think I think it, it was an amazing occasion and it was a, a game to, to match. Sarah, same question. Yeah, just, I've said it before, like, sport can be cruel, but the one thing we said before, like, we came out here or even before the final is that, like, whatever we do, we can be proud of the, the team and the players and the squad that we've become and like one game doesn't define you as that and I thought the girls left everything out on that field and that's what we said if we give it our best and our backs against the wall for what 60 minutes of that game but to, to keep fighting and to be in with a shot right at the very end to, to win it like you could not have asked for more from that from, from the girls and like it's a very special very special group and we can be immensely proud of of what we've done for for the women's game and we will hurt losing we don't want to lose a world cup final and especially in the manner that you do but like yeah just incredibly proud of what we've done as a, as a team over this last week last eight weeks but beyond that and tonight like you couldn't have asked any more of them like so so proud of each and every one of them i'm sorry Going to open up to the floor now. Um, so, if you would like to ask a question, we'll bring a microphone over for you. Say your name and which publication you're with. Who would like to start? Hi, Simon. Alex from there. Um, I guess you couldn't have any sort of uh, queries with the red card? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, there's been a, a few incidents like that that haven't been red carded. Uh, is what it is, isn't it? Who's next? Oh, hi. hi, Becky from the BBC. Um, Sarah, a few people still question whether we should invest in women's sport. I mean, I guess a, a final of that quality, you can't question that now. Oh, can you? you can't, and I was just chatting to, to um, one of the, the Black Ferns member of staff, and She's saying the same thing, like, you can't expect nations now not to go and invest in, in their teams when you put a showcase of women's rugby in a final in front of 40-odd thousand people. And, you know, I'm sure the viewing figures were up there, like, you know, it, it's come to the party, hasn't it? Like, people have finally woken up to what women's rugby is all about. And, again, like, it's being part of that, you know, that that'll something once once the dust settle and we can look back that, you know, two great teams like credit to, to New Zealand for, for their performance this evening and, and how they've turned their journey around over the last twelve months to, to come out and, and and play like that. And um yeah, hopefully that will like ignite other nations to go, we need to invest in, in our women's game and, and make it a fair playing field. And just one for Simon. Sarah coming off and Marley Packer coming off, was that pre-planned or could you just talk us through those? Decisions? No, that was just was trying to adapt to what was happening during the game. You know, there's obviously uh, a lot of changing circumstances and we were just trying to, uh, you know, just trying to balance balance the side. And uh, yeah, you know, we, we, we had a few uh, plates we had to spin during that game and uh, yeah, we, we, uh, we nearly got them right. Simon, Ollie here from TV3. Um, you guys seem to have the upper hand in the first half particularly. How would you describe the Black Ferns team you guys ran into in the second half? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, the, you know, the, the, they were the same in the first half. They were a huge handful. You know, they're a great side. You know, they've got some fantastic players. They've got blistering pace, you know, and, and uh, you know, they were, they were difficult to contain when they had the ball. But, uh, you know, like you said, we, we, had a, we had a game plan. We had the game on track. Uh, the red card changed quite a bit, but I, I think I, just to reiterate stuff Sarah said, I, like we, we we sat here five years ago, a very similar situation, but I felt a very a, a much different five years ago. I I feel usually positive about what we've just witnessed. I I don't think we could have asked a single thing more of our players. 
I don't think we could have prepped any better. I think we've played really well in the tournament. I thought we played really well tonight. We just come and stuck against the side that just had a bit more than us. And full credit to, to, to all the Black Ferns and all their staff. They are worthy world champions. But I'm sat here and I could not be prouder than the players. And I could not be more positive about that performance and everything, the character that they showed. And just the, the game as a whole, for a whole spectacle, uh, you know, your World Cup has to take the game forward. And if that don't take the game forward, there's something wrong. I'm pretty sure it will. Um, Andrew Vorman from Stuff. Um, Sarah, just what were you sort of thinking as the team headed down for those lineouts right at the end? Is that the, sort of the perfect situation you'd yeah. want to be in trailing? I had absolute belief that that they we'd do it and we nail it. And then that's like throughout the the second half when you know there's an onslaught, a New Zealand onslaught. There, there was never any doubt or that that we wouldn't find a way, you know, and that's the belief that the team has in, and that's the belief that when we went down to, to 14 um, players so early on, that we, there was no panic, there was just that absolute faith in our process and what we'd done, and, like, games come down to fine margins, and um, unfortunately it, di it didn't work out, out the way, but there's one thing for sure, like, not one person in our team is, like the reason why we, we didn't win that, you know, like, we'll not, we'll not single people out for that, that's for sure, you know, we're, we're as one, we're collective, and we win, to, we win together and we lose together, and there, there is, there's no blame culture in this team, and there certainly won't be in this final either, because we're, we're a united group, and, you know, we're all accountable for together as one for, for whether we win or whether we lose. And Simon, just for you, what were you, what was going through your head as you set up for a five metre line out after the hooter. Yeah, I thought, you know, someone's have a, gonna have a really good 30 seconds, is what I thought. <laughs> I'd have backed us a bit <laughs> to have it, but we didn't, you know, and that's testimony, they were brave, they went up. Yeah, they challenged and, uh, you know, sometimes things are written in the stars and, uh, you know, I think it has been for, for the Black Ferns this tournament. Uh, David Long from Stuff, uh, Simon, you touched on it before, but how as the coach do you try to adapt things when you've got to go 60 minutes with a, with a player down? Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's a tough one. You look at, uh, you know, you, you look at, do you first of all need to have a full complement of backs on or do you need to have a full complement of forwards on on the field? And then you look at this, the immediate scenario you've got and do you need that combination at that particular point? And we, you know, we didn't. Uh, and we, we looked at how we could possibly adapt in attack and in defence. You know, when you've got someone who's, who's, you know, some of the players we've got, there's 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 a multiple of things you can do. And you know, we we uh, we adapted as we went along. And uh, and then obviously you know, we lost so we all crossed very early as well. Uh, and that makes med life tough tough for us. So we had to adapt again on that. But yeah, it's just a you know. The, Game was challenging enough as it w was against the Black Ferns, you know. But it, there was a few more things thrown in there, and uh, yeah, we. I think it's testimony to the players and how adaptable they are, and you know how, how just how determined they are that it went down to the, you know, the hoot had gone and the game was still in the balance. Were you surprised that um, Kennedy wasn't shown a red card for the clash on Abbey? Yeah. Mm, no comment really on that. Simon Jonathan from Irish Examiner USA, the back here. Uh, question: How does it feel uh, three years' time, looking to face like a rematch again, uh, but with eighty thousand English folk on your side? <laughs> can, can you speak a little loud? I've left me hearing right. devices how, how in it, changing how does rooms. How feel in three years uh, facing a rematch with the Black Ferns, but this time at home in front of eighty thousand English folk? There's only one thing I want to face right now, and that is. Uh, a room full of red roses with a drink in the hand, <laughs> celebrating what we've just done over the last 51 days. I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> yep, right here. Uh, Simon, Kim Downs from TVNZ. You've spoken before about your respect for Wayne Smith. What he's done with the Black Ferns over the course of six months, can you quite believe it? Yeah, I, look, he, 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 you know, he's a professor for a reason, isn't he? You know, and uh, you know, we, we, as soon as, soon as uh, Wayne was put in charge, we were, oh, okay, that's going to be interesting. 
Uh, but it, you know, it enhanced the Blackfoot's chances of, of winning the World Cup significantly. You know, uh, he's, he's a brilliant coach and he's one of the best ever. Uh, and you know, his coaching staff and his players and the belief that they have and you know what, what they turn around. But we, we knew. We knew in the autumns last year we, we wouldn't be getting that Black Fern side when we came over here. You know, it was an unbelievably difficult tour for, for, for that group of players and staff. Uh, so we knew it was going to be very, very different, uh, which is why you know, I've said a number of times it would probably come down to a game like this. And uh, you know, you, such fine margins, isn't it? You know, Caroline Druan knocks the goal over and the Black Ferns are in the final. Uh, you know, and, and we, we score in the last play, we win the cup, but that's not how it works, you know. And, and you know, the, the Blackfords deserve the trophy. They have ridden every storm and, uh, and a hell of a storm over the last eight months, ten months, and they've, they've come out the other side of it. And, you know, for, for rugby, that's a great thing. And, uh, you know, we were just really privileged to be in that game tonight, giving everything we could. And, uh, you know, what, what an occasion, you know, what a crowd, what a an atmosphere and, and a game to, to suit, thanks to Sarah and the team. Um, so I have Rob Kitson here from The Guardian. Hi. Um, can I just check about Abby uh, Dow, how she is? Obviously, she got, got a big old knock and she but didn't come off for a while. I don't know what the sort of situation was there. And is she OK? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they just, you know, she, she took a knock. Uh, we were... Okay, she was she was okay. She regained, uh, did an HIA, and she she was fine. She passed the HIA and came back on. So, yeah. Uh, and um, Leanne obviously pulled out before the start. Yeah. What was that about? Yeah, Leanne's been battling all week. Uh, you know, really, really fighting hard to try and get in the mix. Uh, to, to be fair, as as Lucy, Lucy's had a you know. I think everybody's got an injury at this point. It's fair enough. I mean, you've got a few, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we'll you know, but we were going to play a, a 70% Leanne uh, with a 90% Lucy fit. And I thought Lucy Packy was absolutely outstanding. You know, and, uh, you know, to, to come in, to be told at sort of 11 o'clock this morning you're playing in the World Cup final just shows what a, a great temperament she is and what a great talent she is. And, uh, and, and Leanne was absolutely brilliant with her today. When Leanne could have been very down, uh, they, they roamed together, funnily enough, and she just shared everything she thought she could and made sure she was in the changing rooms at half-time just to check in with her. And they worked. Well, that, that's, that's what this team's about. we got about uh, two minutes left. I'll make it very quick then. Um, hi, guys. Alex Chapman from TV3. Uh, earlier this week, you both spoke about how determined you were to silence that black army in the crowds. Um, maybe, Sarah, start with you. How was that crowd for you tonight with also the smattering of yeah I think um, like any um, home crowd uh, it just come in waves and there was times where I think we did silence it especially early on and and when we got our tries and then when they got a bit of momentum like you could hear it come up but I think when you're in the game like you're so focused on what you're what you're doing that don't necessarily notice it it's when I guess stoppages and they get but yeah I, I did feel like we we managed to silence at a time especially when we when we were on top hi guys commiserations um Simon I know you probably just want to like you said go go and have a beer right now probably go on holiday somewhere <laughs> um but once the dust settles what are your kind of plans going forward with 2025 in mind yeah, I'm not, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to answer that, don't you? I, I'm, I'm not thinking any further than the next 24 hours. You know, the, uh, we're going to get together tonight. Uh, we've got loads of the, the support from the RFU over here. We've been absolutely brilliant. We're all going to get together and we're going to celebrate a brilliant team. Got time for one last question? No? Yep. I have to say, her first name has gone out of my head, but your right winger, the one who was sent off, just how is she doing? Uh, Lydia. Yeah, Lydia, Lydia Thompson. Yeah, no, she's, she, she's pretty, pretty upset, as you can imagine, you know. But, you know, Lydia is one of the best pros and one of the most beautiful people you will ever meet. So she's, she's devastated, you know. And she's, she's as devastated for what happened to Portia as to what happened to her. Uh, because, you know, you've got two of the... They, they've had some unbelievable clashes be, be, between them over the last 
five, six, ten years, and you know the, the game was that was taken away from the game, and neither one of them would have wanted that. Uh, you know, and, it, and it's it's just an unfortunate. You know, there's no there's no malice in it anyway. It's, it's you know it's a clash of heads, uh, and it, it took unfortunately it took two of the best players in the world out of the game. But yeah, she's pretty she's pretty devastated about it. But she'll be all right. We'll get round it tonight. Uh, like we'll get round all the other players who are pointing the finger at themselves. And like Sarah said, there's no fingers to be pointed at anybody. We came together, stand together, we fall together. Uh, definitely going to celebrate together. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Guys, can I just can I just say one last thing? Absolutely. Can I, just, can I just say thank you very much, everybody, for the way you've... Uh, We've treated us when we've been out here, both in terms of uh, our press from back home and the New Zealand press. I think, uh, you know, the game's built on certain values. I think you guys have upheld them massively. Uh, we try to, and you guys as well. So I thank you for that. Thank Cheers. You.